Hey everyone. So today's topic is a thing in epistemology that's called defeaters. So the first question we'll address is the question of what is a defeater? A defeater is a piece of evidence that counts against or defeats a belief. So defeaters make beliefs lose some kind of positive epistemic status that they have. Uh, whether that's being supported by your evidence or being the thing that is rational to hold or being the thing that if you're functioning correctly, you'll believe. Um, so we want to, you know, the reason we say positive epistemic status is we're sort of giving a general description of what defeaters can do. We don't necessarily have to cash it out in terms of evidence, but that's a common way to think about it. Um, and, and on that note, you can actually think about defeaters not in terms of belief, but in terms of evidence more generally too. So you can think about defeaters as just one piece of evidence counting against or defeating another piece of evidence. But I think in the literature, it's more common to think about a piece of evidence counting against or defeating something that someone believes. Okay, so let's talk about a couple examples. We're gonna mostly be focusing on the belief case, but you can also just talk about relationships between pieces of evidence themselves in terms of defeaters too. Okay, so here's a couple examples. Um, let's say that Bob tells you that the bird in the tree outside is blue, so you believe there's a, bird, a blue bird in the tree outside. Um, you would get a defeater for that if you learn that Bob is blue-green colorblind. Um, let's say you believe that it will rain tomorrow. Maybe you're in Florida and it rains almost every single day. And then you check the forecast and notice that it predicts a 0% chance of rain. This actually happened to me yesterday. <laughs> uh, then you have a defeater for your belief that it will rain tomorrow. Um, here's another example. Maybe you believe knowledge is justified true belief. This was uh, a thing that many epistemologists thought for a long time. And this definition of knowledge actually can be traced back to Plato. But um, Edmund Gettier famously gave a counterexample to the justified true belief theory of knowledge, cases of justified true belief that aren't knowledge. So you might believe knowledge is justified true belief, and then you read Gettier's famous counterexample, and then you get a defeater for your belief that knowledge is justified true belief. All right, we're going to talk about a couple different kinds of defeaters. The first is undercutting defeaters. So undercutting defeaters challenge your current basis for your belief. So your belief is presumably based on, you know, some kind of evidence or some kind of reasons. And an undercutting defeater would undercut and challenge what the thing that your current belief is based on. Okay, so example one. Ollie reads in a magazine that Oprah's dead. But then Ollie's trustworthy friend says, that's an unreliable magazine. That magazine just reports things to make people read it, but they actually report falsehoods all the time. So then Ollie has a reason to distrust the magazine. And since the magazine is his basis for believing Oprah's dead, he then has a reason to give up the belief that Oprah's dead. Here's another example. Let's say John believes in God on the basis of religious experiences that John has had. Then someone tells John, religious experience isn't a good basis for believing in God. Uh, maybe they give you know, some kind of reason to think that. Then John has a defeater for his belief in God, not because the person has given an argument God doesn't exist, but because the person has said, religious experiences aren't a good reason to believe in God. Here's a third example. Let's say Sally sees an orange ball. Then Sally's friend says that they slipped a pill in Sally's food that makes certain things look orange. Then Sally has a defeater for what for that the, the, for her belief that there's an orange ball because the pill might just be affecting the way that things seem to her and that the fact that she's perceiving this ball as orange. And undercutting defeaters. Um, can involve what's called higher order evidence. This is evidence about your evidence. So, you know, Ollie's belief that Oprah's dead is based on the evidence of this, this magazine reporting it. And then when he learns the magazine is unreliable, that's higher order evidence. It's evidence about the evidence that he has. Um, similar for these other examples as well. Um, so often undercutting defeaters will give you evidence about your evidence, uh, and then that evidence is a thing supporting the belief that's defeated. 
Okay. The second kind of defeater is a rebutting defeater. Rebutting defeaters don't challenge your current basis for a belief, but they give you a independent reason to think that belief is false. So they give you evidence in favor of the opposite view. Let's consider some examples. So Ollie reads in a magazine that Oprah's dead, but then he finds another equally reliable magazine that claims Oprah's alive. So now he has magazine one saying Oprah's dead, magazine two saying Oprah's alive, and he doesn't really have a reason, let's say, to think one magazine's more reliable than the other. Um, this will defeat Ollie's original belief that Oprah's dead on the basis of reading the first magazine. Here's another example. Let's say Jim believes in God, and then Jim learns about the problem of evil. How why, if there's an all good and all powerful God, we observe as much evil as we do in the world. So again, this doesn't necessarily challenge Jim's basis for believing in God, but it's an argument that God does not exist. Here's another example. Sarah sees a sheep in a field, but then the field owner tells her there's no sheep in that field, only goats. So her belief that there's a sheep in the field is defeated by the field owner's testimony that there's no sheep in the field. Okay, whoops. Um, well, I messed up the thing on this, so I'm just gonna keep all the text there. Okay, so let's say um, we can understand, we've talked about undercutting and rebutting defeaters. We can understand this distinction um, in terms of argument forms. And I think this is kind of helpful. So let's say Jem believes in God because of this. Uh, there is a first cause. And if there's a first cause, then God exists. So therefore God exists. So here's a possible undercutting defeater for Jem's belief. Um, quantum fluct fluctuations can cause things to pop into existence. So just because there's a first cause doesn't mean that God exists. I'm not saying this is like a convincing reason to reject premise one, just it's just an example. Okay, um, so this is an undercutting defeater because it challenges Jem's support for his belief in God. So it's saying, look, your premise is not a good argument for that conclusion or not a good reason to believe that conclusion. So it's challenging the connection between the premises and the conclusion. A rebutting defeater for Jem's belief in God would be an argument that God does not exist, such as the problem of evil. We already talked about this example. Evil exists. If evil exists, then God doesn't exist. Therefore, God doesn't exist. So notice if Jim learns about this argument for the problem of evil, Jim's original basis for his belief in God is left intact. Uh, no one is challenging that a first cause argument. Jim's just getting a new reason, additional evidence to think that God does not exist. So undercutting defeaters challenge your current basis for something you believe. Rebutting defeaters leave that relationship intact and instead just give you additional evidence that your belief is false. Okay. So we talked about undercutting and rebutting defeaters. There's actually a third kind of defeater, and this is called the no reason defeaters. So no, no, you get a no reason defeater when you reflect on some belief you have and then realize you don't have any good reason for believing it. So let's say that Dylan believes when he dies, he'll turn into a zombie. One day he realizes that he just has no good reason to believe this. Maybe he just saw some zombie movies and randomly formed the belief, but that's not actually good evidence for that belief. Uh, and so he gives up his belief. Uh, here's another example. Let's say Sam believes avocados are gross. Then Sam realizes he's actually never tried avocado, but he just has had a bad association with avocados because the bully at his school used to have them for lunch. This isn't actually a good reason to think that avocados are gross though. So Sam gives up his belief that avocados are gross. And do you like how the picture incorporates both of those examples together? I thought that was cool. Um, here's a really important th thing to note out no reason defeaters. So you might reflect on something that you believe and realize that you don't have a good argument for that belief. That doesn't automatically mean you have a no reason defeater. This is going to depend on whether that belief is properly basic. So properly basic beliefs are beliefs that are rational to hold, even if you don't have an argument for them. 
So, you know, maybe basic truths of math and logic are properly basic. You can believe one plus one equals two, even if you can't give a good argument for it. Some people think like perceptual beliefs can also be properly basic, or maybe the belief that like I'm in pain if my leg hurts can be properly basic. I don't have to have an argument for these things to believe them. So even if I reflect on these beliefs and realize I don't have a good argument for something, one of these things that I believe, that doesn't mean I have a no reason to fear for it. And interestingly, some philosophers have argued that belief in God can be properly basic. So just because you don't have an argument for belief in God doesn't mean that it's irrational for you to believe in God. I actually have a whole video about that, which I can link in the description. Okay. So here's a question. We've talked about three kinds of defeaters. Um, let's say you have a defeater and you realize you have a defeater. What should you do? <laughs> I think this is a, a very important question. Um, so in many cases, you should give up your belief in response to the defeater. Um, you know, if I believe our faculty meeting is at 310 because almost every single week they're at 310, but then my chair sends out an email and says, this week we're meeting at 410, I should give up my belief that my faculty meeting is at 310 because I have really good evidence that defeats that belief. However, just because you have a defeater doesn't automatically mean you should give up your belief. Sometimes you should just merely lower your confidence in response to a defeater. So let's say Jem believes in God on the basis of six theistic arguments, plus religious experiences, plus he's convinced that he's witnessed a miracle. Then he learns about the argument from evil, which, which is a good argument. It's not like it's bad evidence or anything, right? Um, the argument from evil might lower his confidence that God exists, but Jim has very strong evidence to believe that God exists in the first place. And because he has this strong evidence, even though he gets this rebutting defeater, he can still be rational to believe in God. He should just lower his confidence some. Here's another case. So you're pretty sure that the train leaves at 503. Let's say you have pretty, pretty good evidence for this, but not perfect. And then someone tells you, well, no, the train leaves at 515, but they're quite intoxicated. <laughs> um, so this isn't necessarily a case where you just have overwhelming evidence for the belief in question, but the defeater you get is, is weaker. Um, I don't think that you should totally ignore what they say just because they're intoxicated, but you shouldn't put as much weight on it. So it's weaker evidence, right? Um, so what exactly you should do when you get a defeater I think these examples show it depends on two things. One is how strong your original evidence is. So if you have really, really strong original evidence, even if you get a defeater, you shouldn't always give up your belief. Um, and the second is how strong the defeater is. So this would be like our second case, even though you don't have super strong evidence, the train leaves at 503, because the defeater is a weaker defeater, um, you might lower your confidence a little bit, but you also don't have to give up your belief. So it kind of depends on those two things. And if you don't have very strong original evidence and the feeder is very strong, then you almost definitely should give up your belief. So it's gonna kind of just depend on the weight of your evidence for and against. All right, um, finally, we'll talk about defeater defeaters. So defeater defeaters are pieces of evidence that count against a defeater. So you might have a belief and then you get a defeater for that belief. So that belief is defeated. But then you learn something else that then defeats that defeater. So the belief is no longer defeated. Okay, so remember John, John believed in God. Then John hears from a reliable friend, let's say that religious experience isn't a good basis for believing in God. Um, and that's John's main reason for believing in God. So John gets a defeater for his belief in God. Then let's say John reads perceiving God, which is a systematic defense of the view that religious experiences can justify his belief in God. Then his friends claim that religious experiences are unreliable is defeated because John has read this uh, long technical systematic defense of the, this claim that religious experiences can justify belief in God. So John has a defeater defeater. Um, okay, so let's say Sarah saw a sheep in the field and then the field owner says, nope, that's a goat, that's not a sheep. But let's say that the field owner is just known around town, he's always confusing goat and sheep and he can't really tell the difference. Uh, maybe he, he can't see well or something. Um, so because of this, her defeater on the basis of the field owner's testimony is defeated. So like John, Sarah has a defeater defeater. 
Um, okay, then let's take Sam. Sam realized he has a no reason defeater for disliking avocados. Um, so he, he gives up his belief avocados are gross. But then he tries avocados himself and he hates them. I know who, who hates avocados, right? But uh, Sam's no reason defeater is then defeated because he now actually has a good reason to dislike avocados. So again, like Sarah and John, Sam has a defeater defeater. All right, so just a brief review of what we've covered today. We've talked about what is a defeater. We've talked about undercutting defeaters, rebutting defeaters, and no reason defeaters. Uh, we've talked about how to respond to defeaters and defeater defeaters.